Let's be honest, the internet has been throwing around terms like AI agents, multi-agent systems, chat GPT agent, like it's anything. But here's the truth. Most people don't exactly know what all of these tools are, and they're missing the biggest shift in tech since the launch of tools like ChatGPT and Gemini. Because agents are not simply chatbots, they're something much more powerful. AI agents don't just answer questions for you, they actually do the actions that you require them to do. They can research stocks, plan a full trip to Miami, even book the tickets for you, take calls, and even shortlist candidates from LinkedIn. So if you're sleeping on this, now is your wake up time. And today in this video, I'm going to break down exactly what agents are and how to use them, as well as how you can build an AI workflow without writing any code. All right, so first up, what even is an agent? Think of it this way. Chatbots actually respond to something. AI agents, on the other hand, not only respond, but they actually first go figure out what they need to do. If they get stuck, they will think of other ways to figure it out and then do the action for you. So for example, if you say you want to find a two-day itinerary for Miami under $300, your AI agent will open up the browser, it will search up all the flights, all the hotel information, as well as food options for you. Say whether you're vegetarian or non-vegetarian, it'll give you options for that as well. And then if you ask it to proceed, it will even go ahead and book all of these items for you. These AI agents are capable of creating a full itinerary for you without any spreadsheet and all by itself. It's essentially like your own personal virtual assistant. Now, before we get further, I want to clear up a common misconception. AI workflows and AI agents. These two things are not the same. AI workflows are like a smart to-do list. It has clear execution steps, maybe a small if statements here and there, but it has very clear path indicating what it needs to do. So for example, let's say you receive a form submission from your website. An AI workflow may then take those results from your form, copy and paste that into your Google spreadsheet, maybe send you a Slack message, as well as send the user a welcome message. All of this is automated, but it's predefined rules. An AI agent, on the other hand, it actually thinks and then acts. It's actually capable of making decisions all by itself. Not with if-else statements, but actually dynamically understanding what the problem is at hand and then going out thinking and then finding the solution. So for example, if you tell an agent to hire a content writer for your LinkedIn page, the AI agent will actually search up platforms like Upwork and Fiverr, basically short list a few candidates, compare their prices, for example, compare their portfolios, and then give you a shorted list of all these content writers that you can hire for LinkedIn. There are no rules, no templates, no if-else statements, just a plain, simple goal that it needs to figure out. Now, here's where it gets really important. Companies are already using agents in ways we've never seen before. Midjourney, for example, hit $200 million with just 10 people. Cursor, $100 million with just 20 people. These aren't massive teams. They're just teams that know how to use automation. And that's basically the biggest shift that we've seen in tech. It's not about hiring more people. It's actually hiring 10 people that know how to use the automation and then giving them the tools that they can leverage to make their work even faster. Unlike simpler AI tools that just know how to react, AI agents really think ahead. It really considers how its actions can get it to its final objective. The key idea for an AI agent is its planning steps. And here's how it works. Let's take a goal, for example. We want to book the cheapest flight to Miami for next Tuesday. That will be the AI agent's final objective. Then step two would be assessing its current situation. So here, the AI agent might say that it's a software agent, but it doesn't have all the flight information yet. So step number three would be actually considering the possible actions. These agents are often equipped with a lot of tools. These tools are just APIs that it can call. So here, for example, the agent can say, oh, I can search up Google Flights. Oh, I can search up Expedia. And then it takes all of these tools and then sort of predicts 
what the outcome would be if it uses these tools. So for example, if it has the Google Flights tool, it can say, oh, if I look up the Google Flights, it will give me an outcome of the list of prices for these Miami flights. And then finally, the fifth step would be for it to choose the best path and give you the final answer. For today's advanced software agents, this planning step is often powered by three core components. First, there's a language model. This is the brain that actually understands and then provides its reasoning steps. Essentially, when you give the agent a goal in plain English, it uses tools like ChatGPT or Gemini to actually come up with the entire planning steps. Second, as I mentioned, there's tools or the APIs that these agents can use. So the plan that it took from the AI model needs to be executed. And that's where these tools come in handy. These tools actually provide it access to browse the web, for example, or open up your Gmail, open up your spreadsheet. It gives it access to these APIs so that it can do the tasks at hand. Each tool is basically a possible action that the agent can take for it to complete its task. And finally, the third thing that makes agents so special is its autonomy. And that's really what makes an agent different from an AI workflow or just a simple AI chatbot. So for example, if something fails, say the Google website is down or it crashed, then the agent doesn't stop. It actually adapts. It uses the language model like ChatGPT or Gemini and then comes up with more solutions to the problem at hand. It rethinks the entire plan, takes a different route, perhaps uses a different tool or a website, just like how humans would do. It's basically a dynamic loop of figure it out, do what makes sense until the goal is achieved. All right, now let's talk business. Everyone is trying to build the next open AI. And that, in my opinion, is probably the stupidest thing that you can do right now. The real opportunity is actually to apply agents to solve these open yet expensive problems. The goal isn't to build a new brain. It's actually using the brain to build a wrapper around something that needs to be solved. It's going to be specific and high value to do. So how do you find these jobs? Ask yourself this one question. What's a workflow in my industry that costs thousands and thousands of dollars and also requires a human to be repetitively clicking a button, copying and pasting, and it's just super repetitive. And that's your target. So here are three examples. Number one is the autonomous recruiter. Don't just build a hiring assistant. Instead, build an agent that actually scrapes LinkedIn shortlists maybe 100 candidates and then drafts personal email to send it to them. So here you're not just building a tool, you're actually sourcing the entire department. Number two, the content engine. I think this would be so helpful to me. So instead of just creating a content calendar management, you should create an agent or a workflow that takes a single link from YouTube, transcribes it, and then also creates short clips, say for Instagram Reels, your TikTok videos, and also generates LinkedIn posts out of it and maybe even publishes all these three things. This is all done from a single link. Trust me, this will actually make you a lot of money because media companies right now are making billions. And finally, the third idea is to actually build a sales agent. Forget CRM integrations. Instead, you want to build an agent that actually identifies who your customers are. Maybe it scrapes 100 customers on LinkedIn, finds its corporate emails, drafts and hyper-personal email message, sends it out, and then also puts it in a spreadsheet for you. You really don't need code to start anymore. There's a whole new side of no code platforms out there that you can use to build these automations. For example, you can use make.com, NAN, or Zapier. You really want to start off with AI workflows first, and then when you're ready to scale, you can start using AI agents. Honestly, right now, AI workflows are the way to go. You can sell AI workflows for more than five thousand dollars per month per system and all you have to do is sit down and make these by dragging and dropping different things nowadays business is not about the idea but rather the execution of it in 2025 the people who build with ai agents are moving much faster than the ones that don't know how to whether you're a freelancer a content creator a startup founder or someone who's just trying to get ahead in their career this is your leverage start small build an ai workflow that does well watch it work 
tweak it, sell it, scale it, and then rinse and repeat this process. Because the next wave of tech is not someone who knows how to work the hardest, but rather someone who knows how to delegate the task to the smartest AI tools. I hope this video helped you, and if it did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and let me know down below what AI workflow you are making next. I'll see you with my next one. Bye-bye.